All right. Welcome. Our meeting format is integrated with members of the public via Zoom. Members of the public who are using Zoom may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and on the agenda. Uh, welcome fellow board members. Uh, welcome individuals of the public and those joining us today via Zoom. Uh, I am Vice Chair Castillo, uh, board members present today. We have Guido Ocleone, Omar Lopez, Carolina Spence, and Carolyn Kwan. Uh, as a reminder to all present, please silence your cell phones. If you are phoning in to join the meeting and you choose to speak during the public comment portion of the agenda, for privacy concerns, the host will rename you to caller and show only the last four digits of your phone number. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment, free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Madam Host, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Thank you, Vice Chair Castillo. If you're attending in person, there are cards located at the entrance. Please complete a card for each item and place it in the basket. You will be called up by your name and when your item number has been discussed and open to public comment, you will be asked to approach the podium and state your name for the record. After the agenda has been presented, the chair will ask the board members for their comments and questions, and then immediately following, the item will be open for public comment. If virtual hands are raised on Zoom prior to the public comment, the host will lower all hands until the public comments item is open to all. Once the chair is called for public comment, those in person may raise their hand and wait to be called to the podium, even if you have a comment card has been completed. Those on Zoom may then raise their virtual hand, and if you are called, dial nine. If you call, dial nine to raise your hand, and will be called in order they appear on the screen. Sorry. Uh, those joining by phone will be called by the last four numbers of their phone number. The host will de determine the order in which the public may comment, whether on Zoom or in person. All public comments will be heard until there are no more hands raised in person or virtually. Each comment, public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will display on the screen. Any emails that are received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the prior agenda prior to the start of today's meeting and emails received are not read into the record. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, with that, I call this July 26, 2023, meeting of the Board of Community Services to order at 5.09 p.m. All right, there we go. Uh, Madam Host, may we have a roll call? Please respond when I call your name. Chair Pitts. Vice Chair Casillo. Present. Board Chair Boblioni. Here. Board Member Cruz. Board Member Lopez. Here. Board Member Spence. Here. Board Member Quant. Here. Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of Chair Pitts and Board Member Cruz. All right, with that, I'd like to open the floor uh, for public comments on non-agenda matter matters. Uh, this is the time when any person may address the board on matters not listed on this agenda but are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction of the Board of Community Services. Madam Host, do we have any public comments? Yes, we have one public comment in the room. All right. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I've been here recently now that you've reopened the meetings to public participation in person. And I'm glad that you're doing that. I'm glad you've kept the hybrid format to allow people to speak through the Zoom, although I've never done that. I wanted to make a point of talking about Southwest Community Park today. But first, I wanted to talk about something called Make a Difference Day. I hope some of you have heard of it, and those who have not can look into it. It's something that's been going on for decades 
And over in Roseland, where I'm from, we've been working on it, oh, at least 14, 15 years, I think now. Uh, it's the last Saturday in October. The people in the community get together to make a difference in their community. Traditionally, what we've done is we've gone out and worked in what we call the neighborhood. It's an area that was put aside by the Sonoma County Agricultural Preservation and Open Space District about 13 years ago, actually, now. And uh, we'll be out there again doing positive stuff for the community, along with Roseland Creek. We do some things there, too. Southwest Community Park is a diamond in the rock. And it's been this way now for over 25 years. The thing is now, there's basketball tournaments that are happening. And it's really good. There's people coming from all over the area to play basketball on the two full-size basketball courts that are there. And it, often, it might be every weekend in a row for extended times. And people are enjoying the park. The thing is, the park could be so much more. And one of the dilemmas is that there's some sort of a um, lack of information as to whether or not things can be done at the park because they used to believe California tiger salamander were nearby. And I don't believe those salamanders still exist. I believe they have been extirpated is the term they use. And I hope the minutes will show what I've said, okay? When I come and I make the time to be here on this limited schedule, it's because it's an important matter. And I hope the minutes will reflect what I've been saying. And if that California tiger salamander breeding pond that's there at the park is no longer occupied by salamanders, then you don't have to have all of these restrictions. You could release that. And no one's ever really taken the time to look and see. I've asked about this and it's like, well, we just know we got the signs up. And it's like, well, this is the year to check because there was a big rain this year. And so in the fall is when, if you have salamanders, they'll be moving about, okay? So I'm hoping that goes on the record and people will look and see, do we actually have to still worry about salamanders there? Last but not least, <clears throat> naming of parks. It's been brought up by the elected official for the Roseland District and the South Park District that he's supportive of renaming what staff calls Roseland Creek Community Park to be Pomo Park and Preserve. And that was told to me by him in person. And that can be checked in published accounts, also on his Facebook page. So these are the times and places where we can talk about that. We gotta find out how that gets done though. I remember watching a, a effort go forward to be naming a park after a woman that was a volunteer nearby seemed rather cumbersome. So I'd like to find out how that all works, and I'll be speaking on other matters. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those comments. Uh, with respect to reflection in the uh, minutes, I, the meetings are recorded, so there, there is that. Uh, with respect to the salamander comment, I believe that is out of our jurisdiction, but we can potentially discuss that as well later. Not sure. Um, all right, with that, thank you, everyone. Uh, we will move on to item four, which is next, and that is the approval of minutes. Uh, are there any edits or corrections to the minutes of the June 28, 2023 meeting? All right, uh, seeing no hands, hands, the minutes from the June 28, 2023 meeting are approved as Sir, submitted. I've turned in a card to comment on that before you make an approval. Mm, is that a commentable item? Every item on the agenda is commentable. Approval of the minutes. Do you have a comment for that? Yes. Okay. Uh, by all means, sir, come on. Sorry, sir. Back up. It's your decision. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland, as previously mentioned. And the minutes, now that you do a recording, is nice for those folks that have access to technology. But 
the uh, past approach with the Brown Act and the Bagley Keene Act here in California were that the minutes would reflect accurately in writing so that those folks who used written approaches could find out what happened in a meeting and could see in writing what someone has been talking about. So I came last meeting and I made comments almost each time utilizing the full three minutes that was allowed. And then when you look at here, it's just one short, small sentence, each saying I support whatever was going on. And that's not an accurate reflection. It's something that I think you can look deeper into this. The uh, vice chair today can make the comment to the chair that it would be a reasonable request from the public that the minutes be more reflective of the total comments made. They should be something that anyone who wasn't in attendance at the meeting could find the written document in the city's uh, archives and see what was talked about. It's really an important type of thing. You may think it's too much extra work, but it really isn't. And in the past, minutes were really done well by Santa Rosa City staff. I served on boards and commissions in the past, and the minutes accurately reflected far deeper what was going on at various meetings, especially during the 90s and the early part of the century. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for those comments, and they are noted. Um, well, with that, uh, let's approve the minutes again, I believe. Is that the appropriate course of comments? All right. Uh, so based on those comments, uh, board members, are there any edits or corrections to the minutes of the June 28th, 2023 meeting? I, I see no hands, uh, but your comments are noted. Uh, the minutes from the June 28th, 2023 meeting are approved as submitted. Uh, next, uh, Deputy Director Santos, please give your report on upcoming and accomplished events. Thank you, Chair Castillo. I am gonna highlight one upcoming event and that is on August 3rd, we have registration for city booters. This is for five to seven year olds and some structural co-ed soccer uh, for kids. And there's a free field day on September 9th in the morning to check it out. So it's a really cool um, program that's being run. And I wanted to highlight that because it's coming up for registration. Also on our accomplished events, I would like to highlight the July 8th park a month at Juilliard Park. We had a nice um, event there where we had the mayor uh, providing thank you lunch for the volunteers and for the staff that were there. And that's the end of my report. Wonderful. Thank you, Jen. And will you kindly provide the director updates at this time? Thank you. And so I um, have some sad and happy news to announce that you probably all know our secretary Administrative uh, Secretary Shelley McClure is moving to our finance department and her last day with parks is this Friday. Uh, we will definitely miss her, but um, and wish her the best. It's a fantastic opportunity for her and we're in good hands with with Julie and with Amy who you've met at the previous meeting as well. So thank you, Shelley, for all your hard work. All right. Thank you, Jen. And thank you, Shelley. Oh, nope. oh, a little bit more. Yeah, um, <laughs> jump the gun. All right, guys. Um, we also had a nice retirement party for our longtime aquatic supervisor, Don Hicks. Uh, it was a lovely uh, party to thank him for his years of service in aquatics. And I uh, wanted to let you know we're definitely in good hands with his replacement, Brandon Hammond, who was here at our two meetings ago, I think. Um, so we're looking forward to Brandon taking that on and many thanks to Don Hicks for his years of service. Um, Last night at council, the city council approved the purchase of the Southeast Greenway property, which is a really uh, monumental task to have gotten to this point. And there's a lot of work being put in by the real estate team 
uh, to bring this to fruition. And it looks like we uh, should have ownership of that within the next six months or so. Uh, there's a lot of details to work out, including a negotiation with the Sonoma County Agriculture Preservation and Open Space District for funding uh, a portion of the purchase of the of the Greenway. So that's really exciting. Following the purchase, it will be coming over to Parks uh, to run it through our uh, a citywide engagement process to understand what the community would like as far as amenities. We definitely know we need to transfer. You know. Uh, transportation corridor for bicycle and pedestrians. Uh, but beyond that, we would like to check in with the community. So it'll be a very huge endeavor to move that forward. And we're looking forward to that coming uh, sometime early next year. A uh, couple other things, the South Davis Park uh, project, we are working on that. We did request it, uh, a time extension on that one. Uh, we having a little bit harder time with the grade elevations at that park. And so we need a little bit more time to work out some of the nuances of the um, underground, all the stuff that happens underground <laughs> that nobody gets to see, but it's really important. And um, also forgot to mention at our last meeting that at Railroad Depot Park, if you drive by, there's a new monument sign that was put up and it's looking pretty, pretty nice. And our, uh, Folks from the business district down in Railroad Square are really happy with it. They worked on it with us to put that sign together. For, for years, it had uh, been in disrepair and been constantly vandalized. So we're super excited to have a nice uh, new sign up there. And uh, for Kiwana Springs Community Park, that's our uh, one of our last community parks that needs to be built. Uh, we received the grant last year and we are moving forward with uh, receiving proposals to design and build that park. Uh, and we're going through the interview process with the highest ranked firms right now. So I'll keep you posted when we know more, but it's moving forward. It's a really exciting project. And we'll be back at council um, in August, uh, late August or early September to talk about the Bennett Valley Golf Course Irrigation Supply Pond as well as the golf course, golf cart contract uh, that needs to be updated. Uh, and the Martin Luther King master plan um, and construction documents RFP uh, will be released soon. And we hope to receive competitive bids for that. So that'll be for another um, commu uh, community engagement process to find out besides the athletic field that we know the community would like, um, well, confirming that, but also asking the community what else and what other amenities should we be including in the master plan, and they'll be implementing uh, the community's desires. And um, another thing we, I just wanted to clarify, if you've been at Howarth, Court, Howarth Park Tennis Courts, the courts are, uh, there's a couple of courts that are closed. We're actually going to close and lock the gates to protect community members or getting people that are getting hurt. We have a project to uh, replace those tennis courts. They have underground uh, issues underneath the tennis courts beyond just surfacing. So we need to actually replace those courts. And so we're going to close them uh, until we can get that process rolling forward, which is happening right now. <laughs> we're getting an, a request for proposals out to replace those tennis courts. Once those are replaced, the, those courts as well as the others will all be resurfaced at Howarth Park. So that's an exciting project uh, funded by Measure M and something we've been waiting on a long time to uh, bring that to the community. And last but not least, I wanted to mention that Movies in the Park has start, will start on August 18th. Uh, didn't make it into our upcoming events, so I wanted to give a shout out for that because it's a really popular, really fun thing to do Friday nights. Uh, starting August 18th, the first uh, movie will be Lion King. And each Friday until the last movie, Ratatouille on September 15th. And that's the end of my report. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we have questions from the board. Uh, Joe? Uh, Jen, will you be putting signage up on the tennis courts explaining why they're locked? Great. And yes. Perfect. And um, email correspondence that we have been getting from Shelley, who will we be getting it? From moving forward. You can uh, send it straight to me and no, I'll make no. sure. Getting oh. from. Oh, getting from. Yes, it'll most likely be me updating updating the board. Uh, but myself and Julie and Amy uh, will be working with you all. But definitely, if you need anything, get a hold of me and 
I'm going to be trained to doing the same as much as Shelly was doing, maybe. So just personally, mm -hmm. I got to the point where I recognize Shelly's name. Okay. I recognize your name, mm -hmm. but beyond that, be a, above my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> we'll make sure you get the message. Okay. Uh, Guido? Uh, interim Director Santos. Is there a chance that I could get the addresses for those three parks that you just mentioned? Yes. So know where they're at. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get that over to you for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Well, uh, personally, just like to thank Shelly for all of your hard work. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I'm sure this is a great new opportunity for you. So congratulations. All right. Yeah. I hope you got a pay raise. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we'll move on uh, to. Me, Vice Chair Chris Castillo, we have a. Uh, my apologies, we have a comment. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Dwayne DeWitt from Rosalind, and thank you to the director for the report. It's good to hear of those items. The concern that some have in Rosalind is that our requests fall on uh, deaf ears. For many years, there's been people who live near the South Davis Park who've asked about the possibility of having it renamed in honor of a World War II veteran from Santa Rosa who died on the USS Arizona. And the people who live around there have brought it up to me and said to me, you know, we told people that parks and recreation. I said, well, maybe you should have called it recreation and parks and they paid attention. The thing was, they don't think it's funny when I try to say to them that it's a bureaucratic situation. They feel that honoring a veteran who died on the USS Arizona has already been set as precedent with Montgomery Drive, Montgomery High School, named after a shipmate of Sailor Maybe, M-A-Y-B-E-E -E was his name. <clears throat> anyway, long story short, we need to learn how the community can move forward to get names on parks, on public assets, rather than just calling them by the geographic South Davis Street. The Howard Park situation, did you know there's a house up there that was moved up there because they saved the house from destruction when they were building Highway 101? It was just a matter of frugality. The house didn't really have a lot of special uh, or exceptional notoriety. It was just back in the day they didn't tear houses down like we do now. So the house was moved up to Howard Park. It's been up there and it was used for a long time. It was rented out, brought in money. But then a recent administration decided not to do that. It's been boarded up and sitting up there. Some veterans would like to see about the possibility of that house being moved again off of that site, not destroyed, but moved from there and let the veterans utilize it elsewhere in the city. So we'd like to find out who do you talk to about that? Because it's owned by the city, but it's in the Recreation and Parks Department uh, purview or bailiwick. Last but not least, this meeting about the Southeast Greenway last night, interesting meeting. It was already something that's been worked on for a really long time. That now is when the really hard stuff happens. Because once you get all that land, you have to manage it and maintain it. And they can't even maintain Doyle Park right now. It's locked off. They can't even maintain a lot of the parks due to whatever reasons. And now you're gonna have a nice big 50 some odd acre responsibility. So during budget hearings, I'm hoping that you folks, especially you appointees as our advocates, will be making a point to the elected officials that more money needs to come to this department for this department to be able to take on the responsibilities that are coming its way. All right? They 
can't do it right now with what they have. So with more coming, they need more money. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those comments. Um, with that, now I believe we'll move on to reports from the board. Uh, board members, do we have any brief updates relevant to recreation or parks or similar updates with, uh, within the jurisdiction of the board? Anyone? We don't have a comment I'd like to make, uh, and I'm really pleased for the quick and attention to the problem that I, not the item that I brought up last meeting. That was with Southwest, South, excuse me, until I get my new team. Southwest Community Park. And I mentioned it to the interim director Santos, and the next day it was done. All the grass was cut, and the place looks immaculate. And I'm just really pleased with that. I think she should be director and take the interim off of there. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> Noted in the comments. Um, anyone else? Any other comments from the board? Any updates? Anyone? I, I have a few. Um, along yep. with Guido and uh, Madonna, we were all at the Hearn Her Hub community meeting that was live at the middle school on Sebastopol Road, and it had good attendance. Um, I was able to participate in the first Saturday of the month creek cleanup at Prince Memorial Greenway, and am instrumental in the forming of a new volunteer group specifically for Prince Memorial. It's actually not new people. It's just formalizing a, a volunteer group of people who are already dedicated to the creek. Um, I've had the pleasure of going to two of the junior concerts on Sunday nights. Nice. If you haven't, um, there's lots of shade there and it's something that Park and Rec I think is in partnership with along with other places. And I had the true honor of going to overnight at Camp Watam last Thursday night. I don't know if anybody else has kids who've been in that program, but um, it's still growing strong. And Mr. Big was there. He didn't have to be. Ryan Shepard was there when I introduced him to my city council person whose daughter I was there to see, um, he just took off. He has so many ideas. I, he's, he's just seasonal, right? The, the man is just amazing. And I reminded him when he would do the um, Swedish chef when he made pancakes on Friday mornings when he was maybe 19 or 20 years old. He's still a very big kid. <laughs> He is, he, I hope we keep him until the end. And his goals and visions for expanding the camp program are incredible. Just, um, I'm in. Well, thank you for that. And thanks for all your volunteer work as well. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else? Any additional comments? I have one quick update. I just want to say thank you to the Parks and Rec everyone. My kids are actually in the little swimming program, learning how to swim. And uh, so far, it's been a great, very pleasant experience. So just want to thank to everyone for all your hard work. Um, my kids enjoy it. So thank you. Uh, all right, with that, thank you, board members. We'll be moving on to schedule items. Uh, Public comments, all right. Uh, uh, Jackie, will you update the board regarding programs and rentals at the community centers? Hi, you guys. So I am uh, Jackie Hammond, and I am the recreation supervisor over the um, facilities section of the recreation division. Um, and so I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, what my team is working on and what we've been doing. Um, so basically, we are in charge of the community centers um, and the programs and rentals that happen in them. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so 
So I first wanted to introduce my team. Um, so we have uh, three recreation coordinators. Uh, Skip Wallace and Michael Marks are in charge of the rentals. Uh, Jean Pugh is in charge of uh, the contract classes, the, um, some of our special events and our tiny tots or our tots programs. Um, Sarah Costa is our recreation specialist and she is our intake queen. She to start every single rental that happens in any of our facilities all start out with Sarah. So she is in constant contact with the public. Um, and then we have three facility attendants. Uh, that is Stephen George, Dennis Layden, and Amanda Hurst. And they are in charge of our facilities. Um, they do everything from setting up the tables and chairs. They get all this ready for us each week. Um, all of our programs and classes, taking down mats, setting mats up, and also doing uh, light janitorial and maintenance for, uh, in addition to all the setups and getting everything prepared for the days. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I don't know if you know that we did some internal uh, reorganization in 2022. And so we kind of brought this team together. Um, uh, previously, like the historic sites in Steel Lane were managed um, on a separate team from the rentals uh, team that ran this. And what we've done is we've kind of collaborated. We've brought it all together um, so that all of the coordinators who are doing rentals in any of the facilities are all on the same team, as well as Jean, who does all the contract classes and stuff inside the buildings, the camps that all meet here. And it's really uh, been an opportunity for us to work more collaboratively. It also has one intake person, Sarah, that I mentioned, and that has really given us the opportunity to, when the public is looking for a space for an event or a party or a business meeting, we can talk to them about what their needs are and if the, bu the building or the room that they were originally thinking of isn't available, we can redirect them to our other facilities. So it's really been a nice way to, to collaborate and to actually get the most out of our, of our centers and, and really direct the public into appropriate spaces for their needs. Um, so what we do other than rentals is we, this is kind of like our five big pieces that we do. Uh, we do our contract classes. Um, so uh, Jean organizes people who come to us um, with something they want to share with the public and we create classes. They, they say, this is what I want to teach the public. And we find spaces and times that will work with that and allow the public to, to experience those things. So we do contract classes. Uh, we also do the TOTS programs. We have an ever expanding TOTS program, which are our little guys. Um, and we uh, have been expanding that program. Our rentals I'll talk more about in a minute, but they range from everything. They range from social gatherings like quinceaneras, baptisms, weddings, retirement parties, to the firefighter association banquet or um, uh, Oliver's Market uh, does their staff trainings here. So all sorts of different um, opportunities for the public to use our spaces in different ways. Um, we do special events. So uh, my team is just do all the special events, but kind of the internal special events. Um, the crafts fair is one of our big ones, uh, the fairy tale ball. And then we also support some of the events like senior expo. And then I put gathering space and uh, I'll talk, get into this a little bit more, but uh, using our facilities, not just for our, our structured programming, but also places where people can come meet their lunch by the fountain, can meet a friend uh, and play cards, that sort of thing. So uh, using the spaces as gathering places. Uh, next slide, please. So kind of uh, touched on this a little bit already, um, but we are looking for contract instructors all the time. We want people who want to share their passion with the community. Um, they come to us with proposals of what they would like to share. We evaluate those pro programs and see if they'll work um, within our structure. And then we try to offer them to public. Um, and we do a great multitude of things. We do dog training classes. We do flamenco dance classes. We do children's arts classes. Uh, there is just kind of an unlimited opportunity to offer things to the public. Um, and that also includes summer camps for kids. Um, like today in this room before we were here, there was a um, kids vet camp um, that's really very popular where a veterinarian comes in and shares what she does and some, some information, you know, kind of training our next, uh, our next generation of vets or <laughs> getting them inspired, hopefully. Um, so uh, this year, uh, we came back strong from COVID. So we had a couple of years after COVID where obviously with the restrictions, um, there was some challenges having contract classes, but this year we have had a really successful uh, year. We had almost 5,000 registrations in our contract classes. Um, 
and our revenue uh, numbers are on target. Uh, we are currently working with 33 contract instructors and we are always uh, looking for more. So if you know somebody who is passionate about something that they would like to share with the public, send them our way. We would love to discuss that with them. Um, next slide, please. Our TOTS program is always growing. Um, we have a tiny TOTS program, which is um, similar to a uh, kind of a traditional preschool program. Uh, we do have priority registration for that program, so we do try to keep people uh, in the program through the entire um, school year so that they kind of go through our whole program. That is an in-house program. We, um, it's not contract instructors, it's staff that teach that program, and we actually create our own curriculum. Um, we also have some neat programs like Art 2 Play 2, which is a art and a uh, kinder gym mixed class. So they do art for part of the time and then they do kinder gym for part of the time, really keeping kids both uh, mentally and physically active. And we have our Teeny Tots program, uh, which is a parent led with an instructor. So parents come work with their kids, getting them used to being in a classroom, taking instructions. Um, so this is just really our opportunity to engage with the youngest members of our community and get them involved in our programs. Um, we found that when we engage with kids as TOTS, we see them then in our summer camps program when they get to be school age. We see them in our CIT program when they get to be middle school age. And then we see them as our employees when they are teenagers. So we really like to start them into our programs young and kind of work them through the system. So next slide, slide please. Um, so uh, I was talking earlier about rentals. Um, so we do actually rent out seven facilities. Um, so we have the Finley Community Center, the Person Senior Wing, and the Steel Lane Community Center as our main community center. We have the two historic sites, which is the Deterp Brown Barn and the Church of One Tree. Um, and then we have two clubhouses. We have a clubhouse at Franklin Park and a clubhouse at Doyle Park. And we do do uh, rentals of all of those facilities. Um, we um, had over 700 contracts uh, on those facilities last year that was managed by my team. Uh, and that uh, is actually reflects over 7,000 hours of facility use just in rentals. That doesn't include any of our programs or classes or camps or any of those things. So just that's just in rentals. Um, we, we do a really good job of surveying all of our rental clients. Uh, so everybody who rents with us at the uh, end of their rental, we send them an email, thank them for the business, send them a survey. Hey, would you, would you mind telling us how we did, how we can improve? Um, and we're getting really good feedback. We uh, collected this year, several hundred people have taken the time to actually fill out the survey. So it's really great to have that feedback. Um, and 95% of our rental customers would recommend the venue to a friend, which we feel really good about. Um, you know, it's, it, there is room for improvement, obviously, but um, we feel really good about that number and are continuing to take that feedback to try to improve our service and what the things that we do have control of. Um, I know that Jeff talked to you earlier this year about um, our fee structure um, and how we are trying to streamline our rental fee structure, and that's still something that we're working on. We've come up with a really nice um, a proposal for what we'd like that to look like, where we're kind of simplifying how we apply fees, make it simpler for us on the booking end, and hopefully simpler for the customer to know what those fees are going to look like. Um, and we we are not at this time raising fees at any point. That's not our goal. Um, and actually, it's reflected in our surveying that 97% felt that their rental was appropriately priced and affordability was listed as the top reason that people selected our community centers for their events. So we thought that was really valuable feedback while we're making those decisions. Uh, next, please, uh, next slide, please. So gathering space. So um, I was the um, recreational coordinator when we were opening the person senior wing. So I worked really closely with uh, Seniors Inc. at the time. Um, and board member Spence was a very, a very big part of that. Um, and one of the visions that I always heard from um, Seniors Inc. was that they wanted um, the wing to have a um, opportunities for just social gathering. And you'll notice that's really reflected in the design of the building with the lobby being so warm, with the fireplace, with upstairs the book room being available to read books and do puzzles and things. And um, that's, I think, something that has been really, really successful um, at the person senior wing and something that I would like to uh, emulate uh, in, this, uh, in this part of the building, in the, in the community center. Um, 
We are doing it somewhat with some of our uh, art displays, and I think that's bringing people into the center to use it in a passive recreation. Um, and I'd like to see us working towards that as a goal. Um, but I have a, uh, I, when I was putting together the slides for this presentation, I went over to the person senior wing because I wanted to get a couple of visuals of how I see the center being used in the afternoon. And uh, you'll see the one uh, picture there of the ladies playing cards. And I went up to the table and I said, hey, would you mind if I took a photo of you and working on a presentation for work? And <laughs> would you mind me um, taking a photo of you? And uh, one of the ladies at the table said, oh, well, what's your presentation going to be about? And I said, oh, you know, I'm going to be talking about uh, gathering spaces and a place for people to just come and be at our community centers and how I think that that's an important aspect of what we do. And she goes, I'm so glad you're saying that. I want to tell you this place saved my life. Um, she said, uh, my spouse died this last year and I didn't know what to do. So I just came and was here. And I came and I sat and I met friends and now I play cards. And she's like, it saved my life and it gave me something to do. And I think it was just a really good um, reminder of how important the spaces that we create are. Um, and that inspired me further. I was already heading that direction with the presentation and I, I just wanted to, um, to say that because I thought it was really meaningful for me. So there, that's uh, another, another um, way to keep moving forward in that direction. Uh, and next slide, please. So that being said, I wanted to put kind of my goals for this year um, and things that I'm working on uh, is, uh, I don't know, you probably have noticed on your way in that our floor here at the Finley Community Center in our main hallway and lobby spaces is um, failing. Uh, there is some, uh, some definite issues with the flooring. Uh, it has broken and it's coming up in places and peeling and, and some unfortunate things. Uh, the great news is that a funding source has been identified for replacement of the flooring. And uh, so that project uh, should be getting started uh, imminently um, and hopefully um, have the purchasing process beginning anytime in the next couple of months and get that uh, fixed and get a really nice new sturdy flooring in here that is going to serve all the people that are coming through, uh, make that gallery space really nice for all of the great, I know we have great quilts up there right now, but. The public arts program has been coming and presenting. I know they came and presented to you guys, I think, last month, and um, they are doing a wonderful job with those. They are really um, bringing in new faces to our uh, to our center um, with the diversity of, of displays that they're doing. And so we're really excited about that. And having a new floor in that space is really going to make that a nicer space for those uh, viewings. Uh, another goal of mine for this year is I had mentioned that we have been doing a really good job of surveying our rental customers and uh, I would like to solicit more feedback from the people who are participating in our contract classes. Um, so I'm working with uh, Jean, uh, our contract classes uh, coordinator, to um, get a system going where we are uh, providing surveys to everybody who's participating in our courses. So we can be soliciting feedback that we can not only uh, give back to our instructors some feedback on how their courses are going so they can grow and improve as instructors, but also to help us, help us guide decisions on what things we want to be offering and what things we maybe want to be moving away from. So we're looking for more feedback on our courses um, through our contract classes. So that's a goal for this year. And then um, my final goal for this year, which I haven't quite identified the funding for yet, but I'm going to, uh, is I would like to do a, um, a sensory space in the Cedar Lobby. So the Cedar Lobby is the lobby uh, over here on the west end of our building. Um, it's outside adjacent to our Tiny Tots room, the drone room, and also our Oak Rooms. Um, we use that wing of the building uh, almost exclusively for youth programming. We do a few adult things down there, but it's the Tiny Tots, it's the karate, it's the ballet, all of the kind of kids, kids programs. And one of the things that I've noticed often when I'm down there is we have a siblings of people waiting for, you know, pick up at classes or, or just waiting for a sibling to take a class and they're playing with the chairs and the magazine racks and whatever else is down there because kids, kids are being kids. And so I'd really like to create a space that is warm and inviting for them and gives them something to do. And I also feel like that could be a passive recreation space. If someone's out playing in the park, they need to come in and cool off. They need to use the restroom. There's something engaging for them to do, and it's a space that's warm and welcoming for them. So that is another goal of mine for this year. Um, next slide, please. 
So that is everything I had to tell you guys about. Um, I would love any suggestions or ideas that you guys have for programming or things that you uh, would like to see happening at the centers. I should mention, um, uh, Jen had mentioned the, boot, the city booters uh, registration begins on August 3rd. Our fall winter activity guide is supposed to be arriving at the community centers tomorrow and we'll be distributing it to local locations, libraries and like that um, over the next couple of days. Um, but our registration for the fall and winter does begin on August 3rd for all of our programming. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jackie. Are, are there any questions from the board? Um, Jackie, I wonder if you and I could talk about some more fundraising for the center because that was my job. And, um, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I've never, you know, pulled away completely from it. So I, I would like to, if we could set all, I'll email you okay. at an appointment. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, maybe we can get some more money to flow in. Perfect. I love that. Great. Right. Yeah. I remember the chili fest, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all those dances. <laughs> it, it, it looks wonderful. Thank it, you. It Everything is. I it wanted is. it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I know the uh, classes are all registered through the portal. Um, the rental spaces, is there preliminary information on spaces available on specific days online or does everything have to be done through a staff person? Uh, there is not. So it does have to be done through a staff person. And is uh, that intentional at this point or something that's being reviewed? Um, it is intentional. Um, so one of the challenges um, in, in reserving spaces is um, it's not quite as simple as like the space is available, we can book, book it um, because there's uh, parking uh, considerations, there's noise considerations, there's, you know, adjacency considerations. Um, and so uh, having, you know, like a rentals calendar public, like our, our, um, our program does allow us to do that like we could make it like where you could see that this room is available at a certain time but unfortunately it doesn't really show the public the full the full picture of whether that's actually available um so it really does the requests really do need to be reviewed by a staff member to say yes that makes sense for us to rent it for that function at that time or not um so it, it that's why we intentionally don't do that um, because it kind of gives a false impression of availability. So as a, for instance, let's say I wanted to rent this room for two hours, mm -hmm. how much staff time would it take for me to make that minimal to, rental? To make that like the inquiry or I'm sorry, say that again. Um, maybe, maybe I don't think I understand. What's the overhead? What's the staff overhead in me renting this room for two hours because it's all done um, with a, a staff person? Um, you know, a simple rental, like if you're like, I want a business meeting in this room, uh, pretty minimal. I would say the, the staff, total staff time, I mean, with the input of that rental, probably 15 minutes. Um, with the setup of the room by the facility staff, probably another 15 minutes. Um, so for something like that, now something like a quinceanera or a, um, a expo or something like that it's going to be greater than that because there's going to be a pre-event meeting where they go through every detail um, but basic business meetings the staff input uh, for that is is pretty minimal and currently there's no consideration of making it a more automated process uh, not for the facility rentals no we do do that uh, we do use our program in that way uh, to some degree for um, our uh, parks bookings, like our parks rentals, the picnic rentals. Um, but even at that, it comes in and then staff actually opens it up, looks at it, makes sure that it's going to work and then contacts the customer and still has to go through that process. So it, it, um, that it kind of takes out the researching available dates 
Um, but the other part about that is that we kind of like is when a customer comes to us and they have a specific something in mind and it won't work, we can then make other suggestions of other locations. Like maybe they had this room in mind, that's not gonna work because of whatever considerations, but maybe we can put them in the DeMeo room at Steel Lane and that would work just as well. So sometimes it's helpful to have that, someone not just self-select out and have us have the opportunity to redirect them to some, another alternative space. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions? I got a quick one. Uh, just regarding revenue with respect to the contract classes, is that direct revenue for the center? Or is that just how much revenue was generated overall from the class itself? It is uh, reven It is total revenue. It does not take into consideration the expenditures. Understood. And just real quick for the sensory wall, mm -hmm. about how much funding do you think would be required? For you know, uh, it, it kind of depends on what, what we go with, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah. so, uh, you know, uh, you know, like one panel you can get for, you know, like $2,000 um, depends on how many panels, what size we're looking at. Um, can I kind of see what I could what budget I could come up with and, and then go from there um, and see maybe doing something in like a piece piecemeal, like get a sense, you know, as budget allows where we can build it out. Um, it is uh, not a project that I have a really nailed down exactly what I wanted to do because I kind of, it's kind of a vision I've had. And so it's kind of a goal to head that direction. Um, and uh, so, I mean, probably could get something pretty, pretty good in like the six to $8,000 range, so. Good. All right, thank you for that. Any additional questions? All right, Madam Host, do we have any public comments on item 8.1? Yeah, no hands raised. All right. Uh, thank you, then uh, next on the agenda is item nine, committee reports. Uh, me, update from the mayor's lunch. Uh, I have no personal update on the mayor's lunch. I do not know if that was conducted or not. Um, board member Quant, would you please provide us an update for the waterways committee report? Yes, the calendar is such that we meet tomorrow for this month and um, we're meeting out at Colgan Reach 2 for an update on um, the second phase of the Colgan Creek undertaking. Very exciting. Wonderful. Uh, do you happen to have a quorum for the meeting? Will it take place? Well, considering it's on site and staff's going to be there, we bloody well go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, public comment? I don't believe. All right. Nope. Uh, Update from the Board Governing Document Subcommittee. Yes, so we were able to meet earlier this month. I would say we had an extremely successful meeting. Um, we moved through several of our bylaw changes and they have been forwarded to the attorney's office. And then we are meeting sometime in August. I believe we're looking at mid to early August. Uh, and to further discuss our diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging language and how we're gonna bring that into our or I think we're doing bylaws. We're going to go with the board bylaws for that one. Wonderful. Great update, Omar. Thank you. Uh, no public comment there. Uh, Deputy Director Santos, do we have any written or electronic communications? We have uh, received the July uh, cemetery. Wonderful. Copy of the packet. Thank you, Jen. Uh, moving on to item 11, are there Board members, are there any items you'd like to see on a future uh, board agenda? Carol, please. Um, I don't know when the last time was we had a review of Prince Memorial Greenway. I know it's a complicated matter because it's both creeks and parks, but with the downtown specific plan and the master plan, and also with the building of the cannery project it is um, becoming all the more vital in my opinion and second item um, 
probably everyone saw in the paper the um, fallen oak tree at Spring Lake. Um, we have um, an invasive beetle attacking oak trees in Northern California now, down from Oregon. And um, at some point to get some staff information on how that's being addressed in the parks uh, would be very helpful. Thank you for that. Any uh, additional potential agenda items? Guido? I just had a, a question regarding where we, at Southwest Community Park, was there a swimming pool scheduled to go in there? So uh, originally at Southwest Community Park, there was a master plan that was developed that showed everything, the library, the community center, and a pool at all at Southwest Community Park. And you know how popular Southwest Community Park already is. So we had the opportunity to move those things to the Hearn Hub and create those opportunities there. So we're the, as part of the Hearn Community Hub, they're asking, should a pool go in there? Can we afford it? Or is it something that maybe that part of that active recreation is a better location for Southwest? So that's a question that was asked at the last meeting as part of the survey. So we'll be finding that out in the future from the consultant who is running that? But yes, originally there was quite a bit of infra a bit of infrastructure that was planned for Southwest Community Park. I went and spoke to the uh, superintendent of Bellevue School District, and I um, meet with him. The property adjacent to Southwest Community Park on the east side, that big four acres that's sitting there, is available. He said we don't have any plan for it. The only thing that it has maybe is a salamander problem, but he said that uh, that would be an ideal spot where we could take and put the library, which that's the library's thing, but that library and the swimming pool over on our park, and that would make it a really perfect uh, thing for, for uh, the community. Right, to have those two facilities there, and I think it's just a bad spot for having our pool, which will be run by our department, you know, Mark and Rec, down at that uh, shopping center area. Because you're going to have a lot of children, a lot of kids running around in cars and everything else, whereas up at this area here where I'm mentioning, it's, it's, it's perfectly set up for that. Wait, do you know who owns that parcel? Bellevue School District. And are they going to give it to Bellevue? No, but they said that, and then besides, they have a school that's over there off of uh, Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, in the back, there's a area there that he said, I'm willing to let Park and Rec, didn't say own it, but I said, take and develop it and, and put a baseball field and, and other things there. And he said, I, I wish they'd do something with it. Because he said, we, you know, it's there and we can use it. And in that particular area, we really need some parks because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of 500 unit building that are down from Smart and Final. That's going to be opening up soon. I mean, if, if there's one kid in every one of those apartments, I mean, there's 500 kids and there's nothing, we don't really have anything close by for them. And that would be an ideal spot. You know, I mean, it's just, uh, we've got to get more and we have one small park um i meant to go there and take a look at it but uh that's there between there and yolanda and it's just not i mean we need we need to have some some bigger bigger facilities there because there's going to be a lot of kids and then exactly around our location there at southwest community park i mean there's hundreds and hundreds of housing going in and that pool would be perfect there and knocked down in that shopping center all jammed up with you know cars coming and going and backing up and so on and here you got kids coming on on a bicycle to go down or whatever it's just it's just not the right to me it's not the right spot it should be up in southwest community park a beautiful pool. uh thank you for that any any additional items Uh, 
All right, then with that, I, I think we're good. Uh, anything else? Director? No? All right. <laughs> then with that, our next regularly scheduled meeting of the board will be held on Wednesday, August 23rd at 5 p.m. Uh, with that, I adjourn this meeting of the Board of Community Services at 6.05. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.